It was a quiet evening in the WCCO newsroom. The 6 o'clock newscast had just begun. Business as usual. On the bridge class, will be the Washington Avenue Bridge. Uh, 35W over the river. We first heard over the police radio talk of a bridge collapse, a 911 call that came in. And we were thinking maybe it was like a sinkhole, like a large pothole. I was in the newsroom and I just got up and left. My heart was pounding that whole ride over here because I could hear all of the squad cars and the ambulances coming behind us. And that's when you know something really, really serious happened. And we have some breaking news to tell you about. A bridge collapsed at 35W and University Avenue. We are told that there are cars in the river. We don't have much more information than that. We do have two crews on the way to the scene, and we will provide you with the latest information as we get it. We had Jason down there. I think Jason was one of the first on the mm -hmm. air. Darcy was there, Terry Gruca, and he's like, the bridge has collapsed. Do we have Jason on the line? Yeah, Frank, I just got here. The scene is pretty unbelievable. I'm looking at a huge fire. It appears a tractor trailer is on fire here where this part of the bridge collapsed. Ten years later, like so many, these images live in his head and his heart. When we got here, it was still. And you could see people coming up from the river. You could see people carrying... Uh, you could see them carrying blooded bloodied people out uh, of the river. It was my first week at WCCO. It was my third day at the station, but my first day on air. John Lordson had just landed his dream job, and suddenly a nightmare was unfolding. I think the image that sticks on my head isn't even of the bridge, it's of the man I interviewed who lost his wife. That one really sticks out. I can still, I can still remember his face. Yeah. She's a fighter. <laughs> My wife's a fighter, and she will do everything she can to to work herself out of a situation. We live here. It's in our backyard, mm -hmm. you know. So it's personal. It's um, it was just devastating. The video that really got me is when you saw the school bus there kind of hanging. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh my gosh, please save those kids. Are they going to be able to save those kids? I think about Jeremy Hernandez all the time. Uh, that interview with him, I can remember uh, just about everything he said. I asked him, how many kids did you help? And he looked at me and said, all of them. How many kids were on that bus? About 60. And what was it like in there? Screaming, everybody was scared, nobody was moving, but they were all screaming, we're gonna go in the river, we're gonna go in the river. When you're working mm -hmm. and you're in that professional mode mm -hmm. and you can't, because when you stop to think about what actually goes, what just happened, I think you'd break down. Mm -hmm. Because you think of all those lives, the families, everybody who's affected by that. Through the pain, the fear, the bafflement of the collapse, there was another storyline these journalists could not ignore. People really tried to help out anybody who was affected by this. So that was, if there's a silver lining, that was it. There was even um, a lot of community kindness. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. when, you, when you go through something like that. Like we're a team. Yes, and it puts everything sort of into perspective and you're more kind to everybody. If something should happen, we won't stop and pause and think that we'll act. We'll act like Jeremy did. We'll act like those firefighters did. That everybody who was... They didn't think about themselves. Uh, it was a remarkable night. Susan Elizabeth Littlefield, WCCO 4 News.